peaceful and proper protest. And I, for one, stand in solidarity with everyone up there. Thank you for making sure your voices are heard today. Shame on this body. Shame. A stunning scene in the House today. State representatives had to shout over the chants of protesters opposing Senate Bill 150. A group of activists who locked arms and chanted an elastic effort to derail the bill were detained one by one in the House gallery. But despite a rally outside of the Capitol and an emotional display inside Senate Bill 150, what opponents have called the tra anti-trans bill is now law. Both the House and Senate voted to override the governor's veto. Our Ricky Sayer and Michael Burke have been following the story all day. They join us now with live team coverage from Frankfurt. Ricky was in the House during the vote, and Ricky, describe that scene for us. Yeah, Nancy, this was a striking scene inside of the House chamber just as representatives were set to vote and set to discuss Senate Bill 150. Those chants began. It made it hard to hear the representatives as they debated the bill. They locked arms, the protesters did, to make it tough for police to remove them. They chanted, quote, trans kids are under attack. The House gallery was eventually cleared out. Right now, the public is not being allowed inside the House chamber. We understand they will be, they will be allowed. Uh, well, actually, we understand they won't be allowed back in once the current recess ends. That's something we learned just a few minutes ago. The House eventually voted 76 to 23 to override the veto of Senate Bill 150. That means it will become a law. Here's what two opponents of the bill had to say when they were given time to explain their no votes. The voices in this room are loud. So loud that most people can't even be heard as to what is being said on this floor. And that should not be ignored. Jesus says, when ye do it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye do it unto me. As he sees the votes on this board today, Jesus weeps, Mr. Speaker. We want to show you this video from just a few minute, moments ago. It shows the protesters who were arrested, who were taken into custody, being taken to the Franklin County Jail. We have a crew that is there now and is working to get more information. We're going to bring it to you as we can. But for now, we're going to send things over to Michael Burke, who has more from protesters. All right, Ricky, thanks so much. As you mentioned, following that vote on SB 150, the House went into recess, and that's when protesters gathered outside the House chamber to further their support for trans children. They flew signs, uh, flags as well, and chanted slogans in support of these trans young people. Uh, they argue that they will be hurt by the changes included in this new law. Opponents say it makes being a trans youth here in Kentucky already a difficult situation, and not just here in Kentucky, but all across the country, but now it's nearly impossible to manage here in the Commonwealth. We spoke with one opponent who says, well, she was really just guessing at what might come next for Kentucky's trans children. I think it's absolutely despicable that they would condense trans kids down to a piece of paper on legislation and say that they are not worthy of health care, they are not worthy of a safe educational environment, they are not worthy of life in the Commonwealth when we know that there are trans kids in the Commonwealth. Let me ask you this final question, and you may not know the answer. We may never get this answer, or at least for many years down the road, but what happens to Kentucky's trans people now? What happens to Kentucky's trans people now, we find joy. I'm not trans, but those folks find joy, they find community, they find each other. And with so much surrounding this bill, we thought it was important to revisit what exactly is inside this bill when it becomes law later this year. It's a wide ranging bill. It touches on many topics, of course, that involve trans youth. Uh, it bans transgender affirming health care for trans children, requires doctors to stop, ban treatments for trans children. It orders schools to develop new rules on which bathrooms trans kids can use at this point now. An advanced discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity in schools. And furthermore, it allows teachers to refuse to use a person's preferred pronouns. And as mentioned, most parts of this law will officially go into effect in June. So for those who were opposed to SB 150, today's veto override was probably not much of a surprise, but no less disappointing. Live in Frankfurt, I'm Michael Burke, LEX 18 News. Let's